Hi, Rich Pickett. I'm going to talk about the Williams International FJ33 5A engine. It generates 1,846 pounds of thrust at sea level and weighs just a little bit over 300 pounds. Pretty amazing. It powers the Cirrus Vision Jet. So this is going to be kind of an introduction on some of the how the how the engine works. So we're talking about some components first, and then we can go into more details. So to give you some ideas, we're going to talk about the N1, also called the low pressure um, system of the engine which comprises of the fan, these compressors here and these turbines, we'll talk about that. Then we're talking about the N2 section, which is considered the high pressure system. And that's the centrifugal uh, compressor here, as well as this turbine here and a few other components. So as we look through here, let's talk about some other things before we get going. This area up here is the bypass. So since this is a medium bypass engine, over 50% of the air, literally bypasses the combustion por portion of that engine and shoots out around the, the core. It does a couple of things. It makes it really quiet. It also helps uh, provide some efficiency. The poppet, the poppet valve here for the bleed air is here. We've talked a little bit about that. And then we have in here is where a combustion chamber is. So this model, as we get going, I'll show you it's not exactly perfect because what happens is you notice if I turn the fan, everything moves in real life. This N1 or low pressure um, section or component of the engine is actually on an inner shaft. And then the N2 or the high pressure is on an outer shaft. So they rotate different uh, independently. So let's talk about this. So all of a sudden you're a pilot, you're in the plane, you go through and you um, on any of these jet engines, but let's say in this one in particular. So what happens is you uh, turn the switch in the, in the Cirrus Vision Jet to run and then you press your, your start stop button. So there's a lot of other things that go on, but for our purposes, let's just talk about the engine. So what happens then is a starter generator, which is a starter when it starts, turns into a generator once the engine is started, through this tower shaft, you can barely see it in through here, turns this gear here and starts the spinning of the N2 section. So the N2 section, again, is going to be this centrifugal compressor here in this turbine and some other components. So as it turns, and you can see it turn in through there, again, N1 wouldn't move at this point. As it turns, right, when it gets to about 8% roughly N2, then what that means is the RPM, we'll talk a little bit about the RPM in a minute. As that turns, then fuel is injected into this combustion chamber, as well as the igniters are, one igniter is on. So when the ignition is on, click, tick, 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 and you can hear it in the plane, it goes tick, 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 tick. That means the igniter is on, it's like a spark plug. Then fuel is introduced, and then once the combustion starts, all right, so once you got a fire going in here, what happens is the exhaust air comes through here, comes through this turbine wheel here, and goes to these two turbine wheels here. Now the air is directed through these. These gray rings are actually called stators. They're fixed, so it helps direct the air in a particular direction. So it's gonna point it up in this model, point it up, hits this fan blade, turns that as the air comes off of that fan blade, then it's gonna come up to this stator, angle up and hit this again. So these are still low pressure, but they're considered the, the turbines, low pressure turbines. So now this has started to turn. This has started to turn because you still have your starter turning, right? So until it gets to about 30% into, then it starts to accelerate and then the, the starter actually disengages in the um, spark plugs and we have a continuous fire combustion in here so it's self-perpetuating. So then this is turning, right? So we have this turning, our N2 is turning, this guy is turning. I like to see N1 usually in this plane, you usually see it at around 16%. Other Williams engines, I see them at least by 19% N2. So that starts turning. This is connected to here, the fan. Remember that's that outer shaft, that N1 section. So this is turning. So you've got this turning from the initial exhaust. This is turning. Then the intake air, the part that does not go across the bypass, goes through these intermediate pressure compressors here. So in through here, we have three stages. So it's called three-stage compressor with, again, stators that help direct the flow. So the air comes down here, hits that. The stator directs it up, hits the second stage. Another stator directs it up and then hits this third stage. 
So again, so now all of a sudden, this thing is going faster and faster, right? Faster and faster, we're going through, and as it accelerates from all this exhaust, then this air here comes back through here and hits this centrifugal compressor. So initially, remember, we are starting the engine by this just mechanical connection between the starter and the tower shaft to the N2 section. But now we have that combustion gases powering the centrifugal compressor. So at a certain point, that starter will become disengaged because it doesn't need to be anymore. As a starter, it turns into a generator. Now, up here, we talked a little bit about the bleed air. Uh, the bleed air is used for various purposes in the plane, right? So we use it for our um, environmental system. We use it for the boots on the vision jet. We use it to heat the air around the nacelle of the engine. Well, if you have too much at idle, you could have compressor stalls. So there's a little valve here. It's not shown here that opens to relieve some of that pressure. So now what's happening is as this continues to burn and an engine accelerates, right, from that fire in there, all this air is coming through here, uh, additional compression in here by the centrifugal compressor, hits that turbine, hits these turbines, which can connect it to the N1, and it accelerates and gets to an idle RPM. Depending upon the Williams engine, idle RPM is in the low 50s uh, percent, for example. Other engines are a little bit different. So here that starts running, right? And we have a stable start. ITT starts to come down. Everything is stable. N2 is stable. N1 is stable. And we have a good start. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's amazing how that works. Oh, also, before I forget, this tower shaft, I didn't tell you everything that's connected to. Down here, it's connected in the accessory gearbox. So not only does it have the starter generator, it also has what's called a PMA, permanent magnet alternator. And down there, that is also, and there's fuel pumps down there, that permanent magnet alternator is what powers the FADEC once the engine starts. The FADEC is a full authority digital engine control that controls all the stuff and keeps it uh, stable and adjust for outside air temperature, et cetera, altitude, et cetera. It's amazing. So now as this is spinning, remember we talked about 8% into, so what the heck is 8%? Well, at 100%, the, um, this N2 is running at about 50,000 RPM. At 100% N1, this low pressure section in here is running around 20,000 RPM, plus or minus, uh, to give you an idea. So it's spinning pretty darn fast. So it's amazing. There it goes, boom. That's how the Williams uh, FJ335A engine operates in a very simple interpretation. Thanks. <laughs>